Hey, what's up? My name is Jay Hardway and welcome back to Studio Time in which I explain how I make my tracks. And today I'm explaining my latest track, Wild Mind featuring Tiffany Blom. So let's dive right into it. And I'm gonna start with the drop. Why do I start with the drop? Because a lot of the elements from the drop are also in, uh, in the break. So when I explain the drop, I am also explaining a little bit of the break. So I'm gonna start with the drums. First up, the kick. It's not one kick, it's two kicks. The one is the cashmere kick, acoustic kick eight clean from one of the packs with the low frequencies cut off because normally it sounds like this. And now it sounds like this. So that's pretty cool uh, because that's the top part of the kick I need. And this is the second one where I took out the top frequency. So I need the low part of the, free of the kick. So yeah, that's that. It's very simple, but very effective. So two kicks together, one kick, another kick, then a snare, cashmere, hard snare. It is pretty hard. If you check it without EQ, it sounds quite the same. There's just a bit of low frequencies I took out. Not a big difference, and here again. So, together with the kick you get this. Pretty cool. A hi-hat loop by Oliver. I only changed the volume. Uh, I changed the volume here a lot, at this button. And you can also change it uh, if you put it into a channel. You can change it here. And as you can see, I sometimes do that. But um, for this one, I didn't. I didn't even put it on a channel. So there's nothing on it. The open hi-hat is cool. So it's, it's like a little, little more groovy. Then we go to some percussion where I use this stomp kick. Uh, also by Cashmere, acoustic kicks. Uh, where I took out a little bit of the low frequencies. And it, I don't use it this, this as a kick, but I use it as a percussion, as you can hear. And then an, a small snare, cashmere tight snare. I use a lot of cashmere samples in this one. Um, So it's like a little bit groovy already. Then there is a hi-hat, another one. Like a more open hi-hat, a little bit dirty. And a ride, a very simple ride. Uh, normally it's longer, but here you can change the out part of the sample. And there you have the drums of Wild Mind, of the drop. Pretty simple, but uh, cool. It's a co cool little groove. It works really well together with all the other elements where I'm going off to now. The bass, let's go. Uh, I use uh, a couple things for the bass. Um, and the first one is a very simple bass. As you can see here, this is the bass notes and the rhythm. And the rhythm is very important for the groove in your track. Please remember that. Uh, you can't just make long notes and it, it, it's really important to play with your bass rhythm as well for the groove definitely. So it's an Omnisphere preset but uh, as you can see I play it in a MIDI out channel. Um, the way I, what I did was because Omnisphere has eight instruments you can play simultaneously and um, if you want to play let's say the third instrument like I do with this one. The first step is to set your MIDI port to zero or to one or to three or whatever number, but I set it to zero. Go to Omnisphere settings uh, here and set the input port for the MIDI to zero. And then this MIDI channel will connect with this Omnisphere. And because I set it to three, it plays the third instrument in Omnisphere, which is the fat and solid bass. Pretty cool. And if you then, because normally it would play on the same channel. 
in Omnisphere, it's, every plugin has a different uh, setting for this, but in Omnisphere, you go to Multi, go to Channel 3 and select Output C, like here. And then you go to Processing, uh, Omnisphere C uh, is set to 3 here, uh, as you can see. Uh, that means it goes three steps uh, to the right of where Omnisphere is. So Omnisphere is on 10, because this is set to 3, it goes to Channel 13, as you can see right here in the mixer. You can also set it to minus whatever, uh, or plus whatever. But it's set to 3. That's why it shows up here. And there's only a kickstart on that. So that's the first bass. Uh, the second bass is this one. It's also an Omnisphere, but a different one. Oh, I have to explain the MIDI out. Playing 8 presets in one Omnisphere saves you some CPU. So you can uh, have one Omnisphere play eight presets through different MIDI channels and you don't have to load eight Omnispheres because that will kill your computer if it's not that, uh, not that good. But I can, use, uh, I can use a lot before my computer will crash. It's, it's, uh, so. This bass is soft square bass. Uh, there's not much on there as well. Some EQ to take out the very low frequencies. As you can see here, it's like about uh, below 57 hertz, as you can see on the top left. Which, which is cut off. Um, and uh, this EQ, which I don't use yet, so I don't use this at all actually. And a kickstart with the same preset as the other bass. So that's the second one. Already sounds cool. Then the third one is, gives it way more edge. I'm gonna show you its three instruments. First one is a synth master. This is the preset, bass funky, um, with a lot of EQ on it, as you can see here. EQ to take out the lows, EQ to take out a part of the mid lows, and some of the highs are boosted here. Some more EQ to take out the very low frequencies in a very easy way. So you can hear that makes a big difference. Soundgoodizer to make it more distorted and a bit more out there. And Manipulator to uh, set it to stereo, which has Manipulator is a cool plugin for changing vocals, but I use it also here as a stereo setter. I don't know if you can hear it on your speakers, but Synthmaster is on the same channel. And together, they sound like that. And then there's one more Omnisphere. Uh, clipped signs bass, it's also a basic sign bass, which just adds to that low. And the stereo shaper is on there to not make it stereo, because the original sound is, if you, if you can hear it on your speakers, uh, stereo. I don't want that with my bass, so I put it mid preset of stereo shaper, and that pulls all the bass to the mid, so it doesn't interfere with some of the other instruments. So that's the bass. Yeah, what we're gonna do now is check out this war horn I added to the drop. Um, it's the Cashmere Warhorn 13 with, which normally sounds like this. Well, although it's, it's pitched up now, so it's, it's pitched up 500 cents, so normally it sounds like that. And then you think, why would you put that in a drop? It's way too crazy, but I like crazy, so... I just EQ'd it like this. And it plays the bass note of that uh, first part. And it, so I took out the lows, I took out some of the highs, added kickstart, sidechain, and that's it. What you see here, by the way, is, is pretty cool about uh, FabFilter Pro Q. This is the EQ. You can see here what frequencies are playing. So this is the frequency range. And if, let's say, I hear a, an annoying note, an annoying sound in some sample or whatever, and I want to get that annoying frequency out, like a very high-pitched something, and you don't know where it is exactly, what you do is you add uh, an EQ point here, and with this little headphone icon, you can listen to whatever uh, this EQ point is controlling. So if I were to make it very small, uh, you can see as well 
here it is like a very small part which you can then hear so this isolates that which is cool because if you play it it plays only that part of the EQ and um, that way you can isolate annoying tones and get them out like 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 this for example and then you just you can make this really small that's an awesome function I definitely suggest you use that when you have like a hi-hat and there's like this something bothering about you you can just go through all the frequencies and then find out what's bothering you um, but that's what I did uh, I pitched these to the bass notes and added that to the drop which makes it sound really cool and makes the bass come alive it's like very uh, very cool I think I think it's really cool um, and then what's important for the next step is the chords which are the same in the break so let's check them out it's playing on the same omnisphere as the first so what i'm gonna do is show you what it sounds like without anything What you hear, the note keeps going after I stop playing it. That's only, that's only like right here, the um, release. This is like, the, the release is long, so it's like 2.8 seconds. So it keeps going, that makes it very dreamy, and it makes the, the end of this note pretty cool. <laughs> Which I really like, and then I added a bunch of stuff on it. I only use this EQ in, uh, in the drop, so in the break it's like this, and in the drop it's like this, just to make sure it doesn't interf interfere with the drop um, bass, uh, basically, <laughs> basically. This EQ to boost the low frequencies for the break. So that's cool, and some filters, I use this free filter to... Um, to to make transitions and stuff I, I explained that in different episodes as well make sure to check them out some EQ like I said and then kickstart uh, for sidechain and then you get this couple more elements this lead which is the same in the break as well Uh, it's a synth master synth and um, it has a bunch of stuff on it here um, so if I take that off there's still effects on it uh, as you can see so you're thinking how does that happen it happens here in the effects part of synth master so these are the, the the effects of this preset and I didn't really touch this actually so it's already it sounds very dreamy and airy and big with the reverb and that's why I um, Kept that, I just added some EQ, as you can see here, to take out the low frequencies. Boost some of the highs to make it stand out and it's also set to stereo. So yeah, with the stereo shaper or Fruity Loops, stereo shaper turned on. Kickstart for sidechain as well uh, and a free filter which I use, like I said, in build-ups. And then you get this. Maybe turn it on is a good advice. If you want to hear your sound, turn it on. Then the main lead melody. Here we go. Get rid of all these. Hold escape, Fruit Loops users, it will get rid of all your tabs. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so there's another Omnisphere I used, and uh, this time I used the cold virtual analog pad, 
with a big release as well right here. It's, this is on it, a Soundgoodizer Transient Processor, which is, I don't think I showed this before. The transient is the first part of, uh, of your sound, it's like where it starts. And the transient processor lets you control that, um, and I control the attack, so the first part of your sound. I turned up, so that basically only touches the, makes the very first part of your, of your sound, the transient, pop out. So you can really use it well for like drums or things you really want to stand out, like a, the attack of, of a lead synth. Um, so that's a good, good advice, I think. You can also play with the release. So doesn't sound good, but like with some drum loops, it can really help. It's a good plugin. I really like it. So yeah, that's on there. It's linked then to this channel with filter and balance. Uh, balance I use for volume control. So in build-ups, I will automate this button to um, so that it starts with a low volume and goes up. And free filter to filter it. Very basic. I did that so I can uh, route the other leads to it as well. This is the second lead. Also the transit processor, also the EQ, no sound goodizer though, but this is a piano preset of Omnisphere, it's called House Piano Dark, and it sounds really cool. And this is the notes, by the way, I, I doubled it here. So those two together. It sounds a bit, uh, it sounds cool, it sounds dreamy, but I needed a bit more attack. So I added a, uh, a real sample piano, Keyscape, the Grand Pop preset, not really much on there else. And then together. Pretty cool. And yeah, that's the, the, that's the main melody actually. Uh, it sounds very, it sounds a bit messy. What I like that about this track, it sounds airy, it sounds rough, it sounds, uh, there's a lot of reverb, a lot of release, but I think that's cool about this track, so that's why I kept it like that. But then it sounds like this. Pretty cool, uh, but I just wanted to add a war horn by Kashmir, where I took out the low frequencies um, and add a bunch of reverb on it so it keeps going and that just adds to this drop pretty cool then i added some effects this one yeah a noise so pretty cool this exhaust Pen to the right, volume a bit lower, and a crash, which is a bit pen to the left. The original sample, that's why I panned this exhaust to the right. It seems that I choose these sounds random, but I don't. I really select, I have, I have like my own little folder of favorite samples, which I use often. And I always, every track is different, so you always need to use different EQ settings, different samples anyway, so. Make sure to select the right effects for your for every track, and it's fun to find new samples. So, so this is a drop. That's the drop. Ah, the sound goodizer was turned off. I was thinking like something was wrong, it was a sound goodizer, it always saves you, it's amazing. Then in the second part of the drop there is this head loop, which is added and um, another clap. And one really cool thing, I'm going to show you the power of reverb, uh, if I can find this sound, yes here we go. I'm going to show it to you without any effects because it sounds like this.
it's like a default patch of Omnisphere. It's like the basic thing you, you start with in Omnisphere. And the glide is selected, so the notes glide to each other. That makes it cool, but what really makes it cool is the reverb. Um, wait, I'm going to show you first. No, I'm going to show you the reverb. Uh, Valhalla Room, but the reverb is set to 100%, and that makes it very dreamy. Amazing. So playing around with that reverb is awesome. I love this reverb as well. And what I did also to make it move, well, I selected the stereo shaper to set it to stereo. And a shaper box, which is an awesome plugin, which lets you pan the sounds left and right according to the, the bars in the, according to the grid. And it starts moving around the sound. And it, with the reverb combined, it sounds really cool. So yeah, this sound is really alive now. And from that basic sound with just a reverb and a shaper box, uh, yeah, it shows what you can do with some very small effects. So that's added in the second part of the drop. Awesome, I'd say. Um, that's a drop. Now let's go to the breaks. So the break, I'm going to show the breaks, uh, breaks to you uh, without the vocal, uh, just to show you what's in there. It's uh, quite basic because I showed you a lot of parts from the break already in the drop. So I'll go through it quite fast. Um, there's only a slight change in the second break. And after that, I'm going to show you the vocal and what I did to the vocal. Okay, um, let's go. It starts out with the bass on one note. Just part of the bass, just this, only this bass, that is. As you can see, I cut from the same pattern, um, and then it just plays. Plays the last part, as you can see. This is the root note of the track, so this is what the, the key the track is in. So this is the root note of the track. You can see here what, root, what key the track is in, it's in D. Uh, and that's what's playing here. So it's like it builds up excitement, especially with this right here, which only plays this part. So with a slight variation, as you can see here. So um, that's very basic. Um, then the, you can hear the chords come up, but just the root chord, so the, only the D chord. And of course the vocal is, is going on here, so... And then it changes into the main, uh, main melody, a main uh, break actually. Yeah, it's all, everything I showed you before, except this bass note, which also has a long release time. It's Omnisphere. As you can see, the release time here. With sidechain on it, the chords I showed you before, it's the same instrument. The drums are the same. It's just like the kick and the, and the, the snare filtered. And the filter is opened up with an automation clip. So please check other videos how I use automation clips. There's not much to it because I also kept it pretty basic because the vocal really needs room and the vocal makes, makes this track. So that's why I left room for it. So the build-up is also not that special. There's a snare. It's a very heavy snare. A low-pass filter and high-pass filter on the same channel. And I automate these uh, with the automation clips. And then you get a cool, cool effect. So that's the build-up, it's not much to it. There's just some, some low frequencies being filtered out as we go towards the drop, as you can see here. 
uh, it's from the bass and from the chords, the low frequencies are filtered and then you build up energy towards the drop. And some risers, also not much to it, just some EQ to take out the very low frequencies. This kind of stuff really builds up the energy. There's a big clap right before the, the drop. And that's, that's all there is in the build up actually. So that's um, because also the vocal is there, so that really makes the build up as well. Let's go to the second break, which I really like. This piano is awesome. It's a preset from Keyscape. Grand Dark Score is, called, is it called. It's playing the chords. This already sounds amazing. Yeah, I really like that. Then I added um, the hi-hat loop, which is also playing the drop. To give it that rhythm already. And the melody, which you heard before, but this is a different instrument. It's an awesome instrument, I think. It's like a Tron kind of sound. Yeah, the Tron 400 cello plus flute. It's like a Mellotron preset. If you don't know what a Mellotron is, check it out. Check how the Beatles used it, for instance. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I think it sounds awesome. With EQ. And Valhalla Delay, one of my favorite plugins of lately. I use a, a reverb plugin because it also does reverb and it sounds really big. So definitely go check out Valhalla Delay. It's, I really, really enjoy that one. And then it sounds like this, three elements. And it's, yeah, that's it. Uh, later on, I add this one, which is a organ, which sounds... And like this with effects. So you can hear I use the reverb of Valhalla Delay, but I set the mix to 100%. So you only hear what the reverb does. Uh, EQ, this is the, oh, I don't even use this EQ actually, so forget that. Kickstart, which kicks in later. As you can see, it's not active now. And another uh, Valhalla Rune plugin that doesn't do anything here, but I automated this so that it uh, later on, it goes like this. You can use that for transitions. Um, so that's added here, just to add some more um, sauce. And of course, the vocal is most present here. So that's what it's about. I think that's very important to understand that with vocal tracks, you got to leave room for the vocal. And the vocal is the center, so the production shouldn't be too much out there. So yeah, it's sometimes it's, uh, that's very important. And then it goes to the, the, the chorus again, so. And then it's the same build up to the drop. Yeah, that's the, those are the breaks and build ups. Not that much to it because of the awesome vocal, which I'm gonna show to you right now. So the most amazing part for me in this track is the vocal. I wrote this track in Sweden together with Amanda Burjesson, Kristen Carpenter. I already had uh, some part of the instrumental and they wrote these awesome vocals when I was there as well in Stockholm in Sweden and I'm super happy with the result. And I'm going to show you what I did to the vocal. So I'm first going to show to you how the vocal sounded after the session. Do you want to run away and leave it all behind to find a better place? There is not much on there yet, just some compression. This delay is not active and this balance is just controlling the volume. Um, so it already sounds really good, like the audio engineer who, who recorded the vocals uh, knows what he's doing. There's no point in pushing time cause my And the voice is amazing, so this already sounds really cool. But for the track, uh, making the track, you always want to uh, make it fit more to the track and I missed some some dreaminess some some more like um, airy vibe a bit more uh, Big it needs to sound a bit more 
huge, uh, if that makes sense. So what I did is I copied the vocal, um, copied the vocal, and put that copy in a different channel and turned on Valhalla delay. But as you can see, to 100%, which means it only plays the reverb and it doesn't play uh, the, the the input, so to speak. So. And now it plays no reverb, no, uh, and now it plays a bit of both. Uh, but because I only selected uh, the 100, because I selected the 100%, if you, you can just control only the uh, delay and makes it really easy to work with because your original vocal stands there just the same and you don't really touch that. Do you wanna run away and leave it all behind to find a better So you don't mess up the other mix of the vocal and you can just only miss, mix the, uh, the delay. What is also cool about this one is that I wanted to add some accent to a couple words. So I copied again uh, the vocal, but then I selected only the word place and I put that on a different channel with this delay, uh, which is playing one fourth of a note. So it plays one fourth of a note and then it accents that word. Find a better place. Cross and I did the same with uh, oceans, but then I selected a different delay and a bit of reverb uh, that's not active. Uh, but then I selected a different delay, uh, one second. So Cross oceans. it goes a bit um, everywhere, all over the place. And it just accents some of the words. Also here. Which gives it that extra cool vibe. I think uh, you can you can play around with this a lot. It just gives that tiny cool details to the vocal. There's a dub track, which means a double of the vocal that's recorded. Mostly what happens with vocals, you record one main vocal and then you record doubles. So you sing the same, but because you don't sing exactly the same, it sounds a little bit different. And you add that, you mix that right underneath and it, it sounds it makes it sound way more f so mixed right it sounds awesome um, yeah so that and then one more very important thing is the reverb on the main vocal because when it's when the vocal sings who am I I was looking for a bit more dreaminess a bit more airiness and I uh, added a reverb on the original vocal but with Valhalla delay which the mix here is set to zero but the automation clip makes it so that the vocal has reverb on some parts and doesn't have reverb on some parts so I can show you with the oh right here so watch this purple line and watch this EQ this is right And it also adds to that vibe where it's like, who am I? But then it's like very wide, that part only. Because if I would turn it on on everything, it would, it would become a mess. You look in my and again, a wild mind. mind. I think that sounds awesome. And I do that, especially again, right before the second drop. Before the first drop, she sings, uh, hold on and I'll hold you. Uh, my English today isn't isn't that good. Hold on and I'll hold you. And uh, before the second drop, it just stops at Wild Mind. And I wanted to make that longer. And then here's the second drop. Boom. So that's cool. One more thing is uh, a reverse part of, as you can show, as I can show you here. A reverse part of the first word she sings bounce with a lot of reverb as you can hear but then reversed um, it sounds like this do you wanna it's great to start your vocal great to do transitions and stuff so make sure to um, play around with that that was wild mind featuring tiffany blom my latest track go check it out on your favorite platform i hope i explained everything right please leave questions you have in the comments below let me know what 
other track I should explain. I'll be back soon with more studio videos. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you around the world very soon. Bye-bye.